Oh, well, I was going for complete shit, so okay. <laughs> I'm trying right. to be nice, Upgrades, man. Upgrades, <laughs> baby. Upgrades. Oh, Linux OTC. Welcome to episode 29. We're your hosts. I'm Bill. I'm Eric. I'm Majid. And I'm Leo. Endeavor OS. Like yes. it, love it. It's here. It's I, endeavored, I endeavored to uh, <laughs> install Endeavor OS, and I was unsuccessful in my... That must be where the name came from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, I, what I hadn't realized was that it's it's the old... Um, it's Arch? And the Antigros, which was Synarch from back in not the day. Yeah, not exactly. Eric's got Kinda. the hand right. Not Kinda. exactly. But yeah. it's well, got I mean, the spirit. It, it yeah, seemed well, to me, because it, I've, over the years, I mean, I've been using these... These I don't know what you call these these simplified helpers. arch installations. Yeah, like arch um, there used to be way back in the day. There used to be one called Bridge Linux, and we're talking back in uh, GTK two days, and it had three different versions, and it was pretty good. And all it really was was a script uh, to install Arch, and then after that had been around a little while that's when Maj manjaro came along mm -hmm. but manjaro they added the extra step of holding on to the repositories from from what i gather they just take the re repositories and they hold it back just long enough to make sure that there's not any weirdness and yet they still got hit by the grub thing yeah, it, yeah, the grub Somehow. thing. And don't they have their own it's, repos as well? It's it's staging. Repos? So, yeah, so basically, well, they, 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 yeah, they stage it for a while, and right. but it's kind of evolved in into more than that, from what I understand at this so point. Is it a, so is it so is it kind of like you know people using Debian testing and Debian stable? Is it kind of like there's that? there's stable testing and live or release basically. So anything coming upstream from Arch goes into. Uh, testing first no goes into staging I, right <laughs> staging thank something. you goes into staging yeah. and then people will they roll it in the testing they hold testing as sort of a fixed commodity because they're trying to make sure that there's not a lot because because you know rolling it's kind of like how debian does constantly. it but a little faster because it's right March, exactly right? exactly and actually it does work fairly well i mean their releases are usually without much incident they take into account any of the like news that comes out where you have to adjust something mm -hmm. so the system that manjaro uses is actually pretty slick it's whether or not you agree with all of the customization they make to the desktops that's really what i've found to be sort of disagreeable and I mean, every, but everybody does that don't they? i mean you know everybody yeah. customizes i mean so i mean i'm I mean, well, I mean, anybody that anybody that wants to like take advantage of what Arch has to offer, but not have near as much friction, especially starting out, uh, I would absolutely recommend Manjaro because it is way less problematic. Yeah. So I was um, just, I was using Manjaro for a while, um, and you know it was um, it was fun and whatever. And then I, you know, my usual kind of I wanted to move on, try something else, and so i was changing a, a so I've, I've sold a laptop i've bought a laptop and so i was kind of you know resetting a couple of machines and all this kind of stuff and so i thought and we'd meant i'd heard endeavor os being mentioned quite a few times i think we talked about it on mincast again a couple of times and um so i thought well you know why not let's try it out and so uh i got it uh, put it on my ventoy stick and tried to install it and it you know it see it's got Calamaris installer so it seems a very kind of uh, standard way of installing things. We went through everything. I left the machine. I come back. Installation failed. Uh, bad script. And I was kind of like, I have no idea what this means. I was actually going to take a picture and then put it on our Discord, but then the the, the warning went. And so, so I have absolutely no idea what was the issue there because it had done all, you know, the, it, it, it had done the partitioning. And actually, when I checked the drive afterwards, the partitions were there it, um, that, it, you know, I said for it to create. So it had created them. Um, but, yeah. I, what I've noticed with Arch-based distros, nearly 100% of the time when you want to dual boot but you try to use the automated 
method of installing creating partitions it fails nearly 100 percent of the time um, dual booting linux what what is the other operating system oh yeah it's windows okay yeah. so yeah. it and you don't i don't have a separate drive for this no I but even if you use you a separate cause drive, your own problems, I think, man. Even if you use a separate <laughs> drive, you've got to make sure that you are telling the operating system. Make sure you put all of your EFI uh, files in the same directory because yeah, I but think, Windows will mess that up. Like Windows. Well, you got to do Windows first. Stuff. True, I mean, Windows but, is already but, on but, it, I, and I I've had like, and I've, I've had multiple different distros on that as a dual boot. You know, I've had some Ubuntu's, I've had Kubuntu, I've had Mint. Ubuntu I've had Manjaro. I've had Manjaro on that same machine as well. What I've the I'm only way I've ever things. been able to get it to work is when I've I put the window put Windows on and and that's another thing. Let Windows create the ep empty space for you. Uh, go and use the Windows tool to shrink the partition, and then you have that empty space. But then go in and do your partitioning manually tell it this is where the efi partition is and it's already created by windows and then create all of your other partitions that you need depending on you know what your everybody has a different uh preference as far as that goes and then it works but it takes a little bit of learning and understanding because you know you you do have this concept of uh of all these extra partitions when you're dealing with the the EFI and the uh, guided partition table and all that stuff, you know, it's not nearly as simple as if you if you told Endeavor just use the whole hard drive that that installation would have went just fine. There you go. There you go. That's it would the answer. By the way, that is the answer. Just do yeah. that. But even if he had a separate drive, he would still have to put the EFI file in the right. EFI no, system not, not partition. If you, have drive, you just let it handle it. You let the installer handle it. Automatically install it the EFI on, partition and splat it where it needs to go. That's it. But it depends on your expectation as well. If you expect to see both of them listed in the grub menu mm -hmm. whenever you're booting up, because the other way you can look at it is if it's an EFI installation, it's creating an entry in your system boot. So if you if you you that know, depends on your firmware. Well. Some do and some don't. Some firmware well, so, search yeah, through but, I mean, all as I EFI said, Manjaro on worked the way with, in. As I said, Manjaro worked fine, you know, on a dual booting system. So that was that was the reason why I was surprised. I mean, I think the biggest thing, the biggest reason we have so much trouble is I don't think Arch or anything that's based on Arch is using Grub, and Grub is a little bit smarter at setup time than uh, only because it's a thousand well, I, years old. Than well, System I, I, D boot is. Yeah, I do remember actually uh, during the installation it asked me whether i wanted system d or grub or no uh boot order thing and i didn't exactly understand because i was like uh all linux distros well apart from dev one have system d um and so uh, but and most dual boots have grub so i, I didn't understand why the, why this was an either or i thought generally well you both don't want both done. like uh, for for a single operating system you don't want both you want one or the other but if you're mm -hmm. already using Grub in other places, you but might be able to on the other oper I know on the other operating system do that the Grub install thing and it'll find both entries, both yeah, the, I th whatever you're running and then your Endeavor OS entry and then one Grub will handle it. But in your case, you would have needed to install either Grub or System Deboot, and honestly, I would assume either would work. But it yeah. should. If you did it manually, system deboot works. But for some reason, I've 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 run into problems using the automated system deboot thing when I've done a number of different things. Like if I set up a encrypted root, uh, doing system deboot will fail to install because it's looking for U the UUID number of the mm -hmm. of the root device. And it's not smart enough to look for the crypt setup uh, UUID, which is what you need in order to tell the bootloader that you need to boot from this encrypted uh, man. Not see, directory, that's but a whole device. other layer of you're hurting yourself. But what, what I'm saying, yeah, whole uh, disk, man. what I'm saying is, gr Grub is smart enough to understand all these things by itself. So I would say for anybody that's doing b dual booting. 
because I think even Arch and Endeavor will say that System D boot is the default, and nine times out of ten people are going to choose that just because it's got default in the parentheses right there, you know. Okay. And yeah, uh, I mean, that's what I kind of did in the sense of, you know, it said default. So I said, OK, fine, just continue on. Um, but yeah, uh, it's interesting how actually I ended up going for Endeavor as well, because there was a, there was a, there was actually a little little sequence of events beforehand. One of the one of the things was I've got Mint. I had Mint originally on that machine Stick with that man. Yeah. And then I was just getting <laughs> yeah. a, I was just getting a bit bored of Cinnamon. You know, and, that, that, that it blows my mind now more than more than it used to. But like. I got bored of my operating system. Like, like you ran out of stuff to do. Like, no, do stuff, do other stuff. Don't worry about the underneath. Yeah, I know, and I, I, I know. But then that's not that. <laughs> we are not that target demographic, are we? We're not right. that target demographic of getting just getting stuff done. Okay, maybe you are, but most of us <laughs> weird. I've noticed nerd. people yeah, that work in IT have less tolerance than people who don't like somebody like me i'm more interested in you know trying all these things and the, you know the joy of making these things work and that and then yeah, the people in exactly. it are like uh well, just give me cinnamon on mint and yeah so so but I've i got then a different decided, answer for you now though <laughs> i then decided well why not do something really weird and install gnome on cinnamon let's see how well on mint let's see how that works that was Ooh, did it very that was very easy it and it just, worked and it worked. It worked absolutely fine. The only yeah, problem does. was wow. the, the only problem was it was GNOME forty two because remember Mint's based on twenty two oh four. Yeah, yeah. And but that was it. And you know it it was a oh. Wayland session as well. And you know I it it, it, it was it, it was surprisingly easy to do. So and the then, Mint Y theme even works. No, looks coherent on uh, Edwida, Edwida. Uh, I mean, I mean, I had changed the theme anyway. I had changed the, 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 you know, I had my own kind of preset theme anyway. That I'd done my own thing, you know, changed some of the yeah. colors and files, you know, icons and stuff like that. So that just stayed the same. And um, yeah, it, that's it, interesting. It worked. It so worked. what about it fine. what about this whole thing where uh, where Mint's pulling back on all of that stuff, right? Well, I mean, on Wayland. Uh, hold on, y'all haven't y'all haven't gone to the. Oh, come on, you're on Mintcast. Let me yeah, see. We're, we're, yeah, I was just saying which specific news story. Do yeah, you we mean? need to know exactly what you're talking about. The the monthly news. There's not many mint stories that come out. Right, but what are you what are you asking? Let's see, let's see. Uh, down here, they add the matrix thing. X app should be independent. Yeah. Where they're com uh, Clem is complaining about the way that Edweta looks on, not just Cinnamon, um, but on Mate, on Budgie, on. XFCE on LXDE. When you're running a GNOME app, uh, something that is connected to GNOME, then it's using Edweta, which means that it looks terrible on any other desktop. Uh, so, isn't that a what, separate thing now, though? The Edweta when you when you install it on like a other some other GTK yeah, desktop. Yeah, but all the GNOME apps require it. So if you install a GNOME app, then it's going to pull that in. Well, it pull and, it pulls lib Edweta, right? Right, which is but, what Ed, that's a that's Edweta, yeah. But is it, you know, when you're setting your themes on a non-GNOME desktop, right? But not everything really... everything looks right except for the things that depend on Edweta, which is all of the GNOME stuff. So it well, will look like Edweta no matter what your theme preference is. That's the problem. I don't know because I've never, about. I've never went and did all the work of installing yeah. something interesting and then thought, hey, let's put GNOME on this. Well, oh, but yeah, but I, but if you've installed something from FlatHub, like if if you've uh, jumped on the wave of like fragments, if you want to now, that's something. a thing, yeah, right. But fragments will always look like Edweta. Yeah, they, you can't you can't change it, no matter yeah. what your system theme is. And what what Clem is talking about is uh, a little bit on on his side. It was his fault because he's he's uh, involved in all of these projects, and I'm not you know I'm not blaming him. He's blaming him. So he's saying that, um, you know, he could have done more to make X apps, which is the, the, the applications that are used in all three of the Mint distributions and including LMDE, um, to he didn't do enough to make sure that people that were working on just Mate and things like Ubuntu Mate felt included so that those applications never actually made it into those distributions. They're, they're just a cinnamon or a mint thing, even mm. though they don't have to be. Like anybody mm. could use them, but most people don't because that effort wasn't put in to make sure that they propagated properly. And now you have these desktops like Zubuntu 2404 
that um, these applications look out of place. I don't particularly care. I'm coming from Windows background where everything looks trash. So it, yeah. didn't, it didn't ever really bother me. But in Linux, we have this thing. Yeah, I've never understood that. I've never, I've never right. understood that, actually, to be completely honest. You yeah. know, this thing about, oh, your desktop needs to look coherent. It's kind of like, it okay. It is I, I mean, weird. It is weird when you think about me. it. That's yeah, the expectation I, you have that all of your app, like all of your applications, need to look as though they came with your desktop or they came with your with your uh, operating system, and that has I've used, never I've, been a thing on Windows. Yeah, because I've used it had, GNOME sort of it has, on though. Every title bar in Windows looks like Windows. Now there are exceptions when application developers hard code a theme into the application if you look at telegram that's how that works because it because it works in linux as well you can make it look the same in linux as you can in windows but if you let telegram in linux handle its own theming then it looks like it's in windows so it that, that title bar looks like a windows type title bar with that red x and the, oh you're the talking about the window manager basically uh the the title bar well the yeah the, bar thing. Because With I've the X used the GNOME the... apps on KDE, and I've used KDE stuff on GNOME, and yeah, it does look a little bit odd, but it's not like, yeah. it doesn't offend me so much that, oh my God, this looks completely disgusting, or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, but if, if I you mean, think and... about that, people are coming from macOS, and if you were, uh, not, not just from macOS, but if you picture this, you're looking at a macOS um, operating system with four or five apps going on, and then you open up a new one that looks like it's supposed to be on Windows. It just looks weird. And I don't think people are offended, but they notice that it looks weird and it stands out. So then, but again, like we've said, it does seem to be a really big thing in the Linux community about yes. how it's, everything must must gel and people do get offended. And that, that's the, one of the reasons. Offended. It's one of the reasons I have a hard time using Windows is because there is that, the fact that they still have three different types of control panel the fact that mm -hmm. they still you know apps can can override so and even in linux i just was trying ubuntu 2404 and i thought okay well let me use the snaps and just i'm just going to try it because i haven't used them recently and i changed my cursor oh you still get the and, x cursor thing and so now all of the snaps were using some default junky little yeah. white cursor because snap didn't have that cursor available to install and so that was enough for me to remove all the snaps and switch to flat pack or deb packages but you this, might this have ran into that problem with flat pack too depending if they don't have the cursor yeah Th but, this all this comes is... from the fact that in linux in in pretty much all of the desktops we have set up an expectation that you should be able to theme and make things look exactly Correct. the way that you want to mm -hmm. had we not had that back in the 90s and into the 2000s then we wouldn't really be r running into this issue it would just edueta would be the way that things looked and breeze would be the thing the way that things looked and then th those would be the only two real options right i think it's the audience i think there's a lot of people i would say the vast majority of people who use linux in an, especially in like a, a business respect, don't care. They're not changing, nope. you know, themes and icons. It looks the way like that, that it came. Exactly. It's the enthusiasts. It's the people who are digging into, you know, who pay attention to release notes to see that like, oh, well, this got updated and I'm going to go check on that. And yeah, it, most people don't care, <laughs> yeah. you know. But they look at a place on Mint. Clem's taken issue with that, and uh, something great has come out of that, though, which is the he's he's going out of his way and putting a whole lot of effort into making sure that all of the other developers, including Budgie and Mate and uh, XFCE and LXCute and everybody else, that if you want these applications, there's now going to be a general repo, not one under the Cinnamon name, not one under the Linux Mint name just a general X app repo that people can jump on and contribute to. You can take those applications, take them or leave them. And, but I, I think that's exactly what needed to happen a long time ago. I'm, and I'm, I'm really happy that it's the Linux Mint community that's actually going out there and doing this mm -hmm. um, because they've gotten a whole lot of flack over the years for being um, exclusionary. But I don't think that was ever the case. I think people look at no, that. No, I don't think uh, that's... I think that's a bit unfair, to be honest. Oh, it is unfair, but it doesn't stop people from saying it. 
Just no, that. no, no, it's true. Just that. Because I've been um, using those X apps on Arch for years. Yeah. Especially yeah, I mean, the web. Oh, you're not Arch, thing. do you? I, I never knew that. Oh, yeah. There I go again, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but never they're they're all in the AUR and they all work just as well on on Arch as they do anywhere else and it's still the best most coherent way of creating uh, what is it PWDs PWAs or PWAs yeah uh, on any system with any browser this this app the mm -hmm. uh, what oh, the web app launcher thing. Yep, I just yeah. installed that. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. It is fabulous. It is probably yep. the one oh. I use the most of all the X apps. You're using Pop OS, Eric? Yeah, I'm really happy with it, too. Um, so it's still 42.9, uh, uh -huh. you know, but the way that they've got it put together, so, I mean, talk about, like, coherence. Uh, they're they're using ex custom extensions for mm -hmm. for GNOME, and they have their own launcher. They've got that tiling aspect. I think it's they're going to take some of these ideas, or maybe most of them, and pull them into what they're doing for Cosmic. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really looking forward to Cosmic. But in the meantime, I was doing the same thing you were doing. I got tired of Cinnamon, and also I was, um, you know, I, I went through the same thing. I went through Arch, I went through Fedora, I went through all the different dis base distros. And then just kind of thought, okay, I don't need to have 46. Like there's, yes, there's been some nice changes between 42 and 46, but for the most part, it's fundamentally the same thing. And then if you put on top of that, the fact that Pop has put so much effort into their extensions and making it mm -hmm. a coherent system. Um, yeah, I've, I'm really enjoying it. Like, uh, because like Leo said, in a, in a way, it's the default is so good here that I just mm -hmm. don't need to play with anything. Mm -hmm. And so the only thing I've had to do, which is annoying on, on GNOME, but I've had to install Kvantum to be able to theme uh, Qt apps, Qt apps, so that they match the system. But other than that, I mean, everything just... Well, you're going backwards. You're making sure that the Qt apps look like Edweta. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Because otherwise <laughs> they're, they're white, and I, I want a dark theme in them, so... I'm not actually using the Edweta or the Pop theme, though. I'm I'm just using the Quantum Includes a, a Gnome Dark, which is a sort of a generic Edweta. Mm -hmm. Is this on your um, the tablet? The no the kind of the Sony. No, system? the tablet I have just straight Ubuntu. Okay. Uh, for testing, because that's what I'm doing for Distro Hoppers Digest this month. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, so f uh, this is on my Dell uh, XPS 15 laptop. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, speaking of Ubuntu, I suppose I I installed it on one of my machines as well, twenty four oh four. Obviously, having and we talked about it last time and on Mincast about how you shouldn't upgrade and how thankfully I've not been able to upgrade from twenty three ten. Um, so I did a fresh install, and um, that's uh, I've decided to see how long I can go, kind of like you, Eric, of just using snaps and see how far that is going to go it's on. It's going to be just fine. I see Eric I mean, to, shaking And to be me. fine. Yeah, if you don't mind your software being two years out of date. Yeah, what? I mean, to be fair, it does seem what to software? be software. I mean, it's... this might be because I have been, might be because of our interview last week with Popey, but I've kind of thought, you know, I'm going to give this a shot and, you know, let's see how it goes. I'm not what going to his take? do my auto. Oh, I mean, Stop he's worrying about it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. No, he he. Because I, we he didn't ask worrying him worrying about it. <laughs> no, we did talk to we did talk a little bit about snaps because I mean he has been involved in snaps and he was kind of like, look, if you want to use it, great. If you want to use Flatpak, that's great. It's entirely up to you. Use right. what yeah. you like. Yes. Yeah. Um. Right. I you know I've put a lot of effort into uh, putting making these and I want other people, um, to use the stuff that I've been involved in making and stuff, but if you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. The uh, What he was trying to say, which is one of the things that I got, and it's interesting actually, because I've seen a couple of um, other things which uh, really kind of jived with what he was saying, you know, that the, there isn't a, it doesn't seem to be a live and let live culture amongst some Linux nerds. You know, right. it's kind of like, you know, you do what's good for you. And if it works good for you, great yeah and that should I'll be the do, default yeah and i'll do what's good for me and that's also fine but don't kind of come up with some kind of uh malicious oh it's spyware oh it's they're trying to make everything proprietary they're trying to do this you know people just you know there isn't 
the, the people just aren't doing that when it comes to Ubuntu. And and he's like, look, I know because I've been in there. I've been in Canonical. I've seen what people do. Yes, mistakes have been made. Um, but the idea that there's some kind of big overarching narrative of you know the evil man plotting to take over the Linux desktop. Good, you know, good. Yeah, good. You know, th- that's just kind of not true. And the reason why I'm I'm bringing it up is because a couple of days later there was a um a video by uh, Nick on my Linux experiment. I think I put it on Discord um, about um, you know what would be the how would if someone made a Linux distro and and it went through initiatification. Right, like Windows. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I saw and that. And How, it would just be, it would just be a Chromebook. That's, yeah. that's what it would be. Well, the interesting thing was the comments at the bottom, because there was comments saying, "Yeah, this is exactly what Canonical is doing. This is exactly what Ubuntu is doing. This is exactly what Canonical is uh, doing." And I just, and I just, well, that's and, stupid. But and, and and I just kind of thought, I I got what Popey was on about then. That is at that point, I thought to myself, "Yeah, I get yeah. what you're on about, and why you're upset by it because, yeah, people are just doing their thing." You know, um, and as I said, you know, ascribing malicious motives when, look, if you don't like it, there's lots of things you can do instead, you know, buy a MacBook like Leo does. You know? So, you know, that's all fine and good, but it's it's been my point. The standby when it comes, time is amazing. It, oh, God, it, don't <laughs> remind me. Don't remind me. Don't remind me. It's the one thing I miss about that M1 MacBook, man. And and when you close it, it the, the sound that it makes, that little clunk. Oh, so, so satisfying. Okay, that bit I'm I'm not so much about, but the uh, but the standby time definitely. I mean, that is that, that it is ought to epic. be. It is I can, epic. I can buy four other laptops for the price, so um, and yet none of them will work. It just seems like with snaps, though. I mean, if we are to criticize, which we, you know, as we point out when we're being reasonable people, which isn't all the time, but sometimes. Uh, the thing about Snaps is when that was in its heyday, and when I say heyday, I mean when everybody was talking about them and it was a big thing, you know, it, it there does seem to be a bit of a decline. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, the, you know, it is fair to have a discussion about the the technical aspects yeah and the people need to be aware that and the shortcoming do they that's know top. that's well top. yeah because well, it seemed like what happened was when canonical was in their heyday and you had they were fully staffed with people like popey and wimpy and they were going out and they were talking all these developers all these third-party software vendors into you know what if you want to if you want to be on the linux desktop you need to make a snap and they went they went all in balls out on that and they're like fine we'll make a snap and it was great and everything you know and these people were back and forth talking and then when when the conversation died down and it was for whatever reason it just kind of languished you know in in a lot of cases yeah. i use obs studio as an example with snaps because yeah there was a snap that was made has anybody kept it up to date well no because nobody there's no one main entity taking complete responsibility of all of the snaps you know it, it yeah. was just these individual people and when they're no longer doing it then it just sits and not gets it, it just doesn't get done right it's it's the problem of the android store the original problem of the android store it's what killed the microsoft store the first time they tried it yeah. It's that people don't care. Like, they can already get their app easily elsewhere. Why would they yeah. care about putting it in another store to deal with it another way? So, and so the way, that, uh, the way that Canonical attacked the problem was to encourage everybody to do it. Well, people burn out. People get bored. People stop doing it. And if you're not investing, this is, I think, what Canonical Sin really was. If you're not going to if you're going to tell everybody to use the store but you're not going to throw a bunch of money at it to make sure that it stays up to date and everything, then it's just not going to be a good store. And what you're talking about is exactly what happened. Yeah. Things started to have issues and things stopped getting updated and then new people, fresh blood had to come in to kind of save it from itself. And I think Martin Wimpress took care of the OBS thing for you and then took that way beyond but is he even maintaining it anymore now that he's not a canonical? That's the employee? thing. If if the guy that takes it over says, "Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and update it," yeah. well, that's fine. But OBS Studio has an update 
they have a cadence, you know, it's it's not every day, but it's every so often. And if you're not keeping up with that, then, you know, it is what it is. So Yeah. But OBS um, got tired of the traditional package distribution model, and so they just started doing Flatpak because Flatpak is and, by default available in more places. And, and I think so that's, that was the right choice. That's the interesting thing right there is that Flatpak, better or worse, has ma- has garnered and maintained a better culture for keeping things up to date. And I'm not sure what they've done that was so different other than this. being a bit more agnostic and open yeah, that's it no that's it that's yeah the that must be it, it because I, I think you know i don't think it's a bad thing that canonical tried to push snap and and get everybody into the canonical or ubuntu ecosystem but i do think that the community that you're targeting isn't really going to like that too much but i think the people that don't even know what snap is mm-hmm. don't care and I think Canonical was hoping that those people wouldn't notice. And I think, you know what, to this day, I still think they don't notice. I still think the people that do not know the difference between a snap and a flat pack even notice. Well, I no, think, I though, when you're talking about a piece of software that is several years out of date, you're taking right. advantage of the fact that people don't notice. Oh, sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. But yeah. but the, the problem is that you're not targeting the end user with this campaign. You're targeting the developers with this campaign. And for that to work, you need to have the the site, the focus correct on community building with these developers. And that's what I think um, XDG app, as it moved into to Flatpak and as Flatpak <coughs> spawned up, I think that's what, what happened on that side of things. And it stayed open. And that's, that's why Flatpak won, I think. Yeah. I don't have a problem with snaps as a fundamental concept. I think I have no, a problem with the fact that they're not maintained very well. And they're you, not. You know, and they're, so what do you say about the flat packs that are also not maintained well? I say that it's a mixed bag, and I don't disagree. But a lot of times, those are also just somebody who wanted to create a flat pack, and they did it, and then with no intention of maintaining it in the first place. So maybe I think garbage snap has collection. the same problem. I think that's the problem that you're talking about, though. Well, and Popey admitted that he had went crazy adding things to Snap yeah. to start with. And then then people were coming back to him and saying, hey, is this ever going to get updated? And he realized that he was trapped in this cycle of needing to maintain things. There's no one to hand it off to. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's so I don't have trust that, one, I have an issue with the integration aspect of it, which I know is kind of a small aspect of it but it's enough to annoy me that i don't want to use it and secondly that it's almost everything i went to install like discord and telegram and everything was at least one version out of date and so i just and and not by like oh it, it was released yesterday it was like released six months ago and so i just don't have any confidence that stuff is being Managed properly, and then you throw in, and I know this could happen in Flatpak as well, but you throw in the crypto component, you know, yeah. the, the app, and I just feel like there's no real plan for making and keeping Snap a first class, you know, alter, alternative right. to dev packages. And this goes back to what I was saying. This is canonical sin when it comes to that. Throw money. So I'm sorry you developed it. I'm maybe sorry there needs that it's to be like this, but you uh, need to fix it. And to yeah, fix it, it may be a people to do it. A mechanism that is keeping track of version numbering. And hey, uh, if the snap version has fallen X number of, I don't know, even patch well, level that. versions you just need someone behind. To care about it. And, well, I mean, a mechanism that at least labels these snaps. Hey, well, this this is a way outdated snap. Are you sure think you want about, to install think it? Think about the think about the AUR bill because that's a very similar situation. If something is. is out of date, it gets flagged, and then you know, you know, maybe that doesn't mean you can't use it. I mean, you could still use something that's out of date unless there's a dependency that's you know got a problem because mm-hmm. Arch is rolling. Um, but yeah, having knowing that it's not up to date. Um, that's and an inherent also, knowledge, though, with the AUR that you when a, anybody that uses Arch that goes and uses the AUR, you you do so or well, in theory, you do so with the understanding that you're you might be getting software that is 
not quite right for one reason or another, and that's one of them, you know. Whereas Snaps, you're kind of sold this idea that, hey, come use this. It's going to be okay. Right. This is yeah. this is our thing, yeah. you know. We take care of this. We're going to make sure you're safe, you're so, secure. So, again, I think, you know, uh, paraphrasing something that we mentioned, again, last week, you know, it's more about incompetence rather than malice. It's all about the execution hasn't been as good. I'm just assuming that everything's always going to be as great as it is right now. You know, it it was all, everybody was excited about snaps in the beginning. We got this, you know, we've, we've came up with this uh, universal packaging format. And if you're going to be anywhere, you need to be on Ubuntu. And oh, by the way, snaps are, they, they're available and they work just as well anywhere else. Come over to our side and then the people that were involved in all that have moved on and arguably much of it has left the language you know my thing was well snaps we should focus a little bit more if i was to if they if canonical was to ask me okay what should we do with it then well focus more on the problems that snaps solve for Ubuntu, that it solves for Canonical, that it allows you to have one version of a web browser that will be installable and workable on no matter what version of Ubuntu we're talking about. Because that's that was, from their point of view, the biggest problem they needed to solve, because it Not was... Not quite, because Snaps does way more than that. It does, but from their point of view, what was the biggest thing they needed to take care of? Was to be the able fact to make the Linux system modular so that any piece can be removed and replaced by any other piece. And, and right. it's all done in an immutable fashion where you know the box is, is the box. And when you take out the kernel and you replace it with a new kernel, well, that's it what I'm just talking about. hooks up to everything else and you don't have to worry about it. That's, that was Snap's real, like, uh, what do you call that thing? Like reason for existing you know like that that was the real thing the modularity aspect of it all the so software aspect of it all on the desktop was just where it was the proving ground part and that's where everybody kind of got you know hit with all of these weird little bugs so if i've got 1404 i can install the same oh, God, version of fire it? of firefox <laughs> as i mean if you've got uh the pro ubuntu pro you've wow, you've got old yeah, you can, years, that's right. in theory, you can. Well, you can go twelve years now. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. can you can keep using that until twenty twenty six. But yes, and you yes, can install that's part of what they were trying to solve. And that's important. And I get that. Let's yeah. focus on that rather than just saying that you know what snaps is just another alternative to Flatpak, which at this point, as far not, as I'm it's concerned, way it's not more than that. Oh, no, no, it's it's not because it's way more than that. Like Flatpak solves that problem that you're describing. Snap solves that problem too, but it also tries to solve a myriad other problems as well. So, like, they are comparable, but Snaps do way more. Um, sure. As long as people are keeping them up to date. <laughs> well, as I mean, long as you're... Keep themselves I, I, up to date, though. Yeah, and I mean, that's just... Then, then this is just a case of... Um, just being a good steward of the projects that you're involved in, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah. that's, um, that's it. That's it. Yeah, you know, that, 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 yes, you know, there isn't anything inherently right or wrong in any of, when I mean, it's packaging formats, for God's sake, it's hardly, you know, you know, we, we, we can find many other things to disagree about. We shouldn't be talking about. about this. It's an implementation yeah. detail. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if you're going to do it and if you're going to promote it, then, you know, you should yeah. carry yeah. on with the promises that you are giving about Put your money where your mouth is yeah and i think yeah i mean and that is a valid criticism and that is something that you know but then interestingly now are you then do you not then get into a self defeat do you not end up in a self-fulfilling prophecy of well it's not being maintained very well so people aren't taking advantage of it people aren't looking into it people are focusing on flat pack or whatever and so therefore the things that are there that were getting updated are now not getting updated either so you know it just kind of spirals down and down and down do you know well, let, mean? let me let me ask you this how come the mac app store works i have no idea 
Maybe because people who because the company have controls much... the hardware and the software stack. It's... Because they no, actually why... put the no. time and energy into maintaining it. Oh, yeah, yes, the, 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 whole... the people who have it have a Stockholm syndrome with their money and their bank account and like spending yeah. a lot. It of doesn't it have to work anywhere you... except Mac. I, I mean, it's simple. That... Hold on, hold on. Take your hater hat off for a sec. When <laughs> I... You can you can still go you can still go to the website and download the DMG and then mount the image and then drag and drop the little thing inside of there and it, and for most of these applications that you pay four ninety nine for in the app store it just works right like you don't have to actually pay most of the time to do that kind of thing you just go download the thing so like you people don't have to use the app store it is extra why does it work you know it doesn't why? have to work for anything else but mac well, and I, no, but because they make money off of it bingo because there's an incentive to put stuff in there and when i ask Every single time when I ask anybody involved with any of these projects, I was just talking to George Castro the other day, pay your developers. My God, yeah. give them an incentive to do the thing you want them to do. If you want them to be putting stuff into the Snap Store, pay them. If you, if you want to encourage them to continue updating their software in FlatHub, pay them. If you want them to keep developing their software independent of any of these distribution models so that people can put them in there themselves, pay them. Like... It's not the end all be all of all developer problems, but man, it's a good band aid for taking care of the people that take care of us without, for the most part, asking for anything in return in the software. When's the last time you saw a nag screen in open source software to remind you to pay your developers? Very rare. Yeah. Just go do it anyway. Go seek it out. Find the about page. Go there. Click on their email. Tell them thank you. Do those things. This is why the Apple ecosystem works. People get money by being involved in it. And I think the people that use Apple have this expectation that not everything is going to be free. People's time is not free. So, yeah, you're going to part. Well, I just did it the other day. It was a guy on Mastodon said, I have a writing app for Mastodon. And all it's distraction-free. All you do is you open up the app, you sign in, and you write. There's no replies. There's no boosts. There's no, none of that. You write. You can do threading. That's it. I paid the guy $5. I haven't even used it yet. That was a week ago. But that's the point. Like, that application sounds like one that I would use on a very regular basis. So I'm going to go ahead and invest in it and just be part of that community already. And then... I got a lifetime license now. I never have to pay him again. But you know what? I probably will. So the, whilst I agree with you, what I would say is that if <clears throat> if a big company like Canonical started paying developers to do things like this, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's let's be honest. Who will be the first set of people who would be up in arms of? Oh, they're trying to take over Linux. But those people aren't using Ubuntu already. So who cares? <laughs> They're I mean, already that, not even on the train. True, true. But I'm just saying that, you know, it, uh, oh, see, we told you that they're an evil company that's just trying Boy, to... Boy, we'd have some interesting conversations, though, they, if if it was just something that sim something simple that Canonical would set up, like, okay, here here's the thing. We're going to pay everyone to put apps in the Snap Store. If you don't keep, keep them up to date, they're going to be removed. Um, you're going to have a warning period, and then they're going to be removed, but we're going to pay everybody. And it would be and literally... I don't even the, think you have to pay everybody. I don't think Canonical has to pay the developers that are supporting their own software. I just think you have to set up a payment system where people can pay them. Yeah. There would be a lot of... <laughs> Majid's right. I mean, people would be... Oh, look at Elementary OS. They're getting, they're getting flack all the time still for allowing open source developers to be paid for their work. Yet, nonetheless, they seem to have something that's working for them, you know. Oh, no. Paying your developers yeah. actually works a little bit. Actually, huh. th that's a good question, actually. Has anybody checked out uh, Elementary OS recently? I have, and not much has changed since the... Uh... It's Elementary yeah. OS. Yeah. Yeah, I looked at 7.1. It's... It is what it is. I mean, it's yeah. not. Go through the change log. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff always happening yeah. they did in the, the background. There's always yeah, improvements. They, they added the um, accessibility stuff for color blindness. Um, oh, yeah. That was so cool. It, yeah, it we had them on. You, like, you can test the different types so that you can make sure that you get the correct color blindness mm -hmm. for you, right? Yeah. And that, that's, that's another big part of the thing, right? Like, accessibility is not, it's not a feature, man. 
it is part of the development process, and without it, you're excluding a whole lot of people. It is, but it's very important, and arguably, you could set a dollar value to that type of, oh. of uh, development. And, no, what yeah, are you saying to pay I mean, your developers? Oh, I, I always do. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, you're absolutely right. The, the problem... <laughs> I mean, I think we are getting better as a community when it comes to paying developers and, you know, buying them a coffee or Patreons or whatever it might be. I think we are getting better at that, actually. Yeah, the difficulty is that we also want to make the stuff available. It is in our our set of morals, our moral set, to make these same things available at the same quality to the people that perhaps cannot afford it, whether whether it's because they can't afford right. it or whether it they just cannot optional. safely, they can't safely set up a path of sending money to a developer for these things, yep. you know. Um, Only 1% of the people are going to actually pay for the software, but if we can encourage those 1% of the people to actually do the thing, I think we're going to be in a much better spot for as much as I hate the guy because of what he did to Linux in the embrace, extend, extinguish stuff. Balmer was right with the focus on developers, make everything easy, make everything available. Developers, 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 develop. You know the sweaty one where he's up on yeah. stage and he's sweating profusely. And developers, developers. Was you there, Leo? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I <laughs> wish I were. That would have been cool. It was magical. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, th I think the final step is rewarding those developers outside of a star on GitHub, which is also good. Go do that. But you know, sending them a buck or two is just you know. My, no, my, you're absolutely right. An yeah. extra coffee might be a little bit more. Uh, more, you know, it helps them think about this stuff a little bit more than a star on GitHub because uh, they can, you know, buy a coffee with it or a pizza with it or something. Absolutely right. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. So um, have you uh, recovered from the uh, Popey interview, uh, Bill? You're fangirling oh. a lot. Yeah, you know, I was th that was a lot of anxiety re uh, re leading up to that interview because you you listen to him on shows and there's shows where he's very very mellow and then there's shows where he can be real uh, confrontational with mm -hmm. people and I've noticed most of the time it's when he's on a show with uh, Resington, you know. He can be real back and forth with him, but I think that's just kind of part. Yeah, of that, that, yeah, but yeah. I think that's kind of because they've been yeah. for a while, and I think it's part of their friend dynamic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and I also know he's got a lot of triggers too, so I wasn't real sure, you know, how how hard should we dig at him, you know, because I didn't want to spend half the show like trying to calm him down, you know, which you know to his to his. Uh, not, not the benefit. I don't know what the word is. Credit. credit. No, credit. To his credit, credit uh, he was he was very, very cordial, friendly. That was a fantastic interview. Yeah. We could have went on for hours. Yeah. We really I could. Mean, I did, yeah, I messaged him a, a couple of days after as well, saying, you know, thanks a lot for coming on and yeah. all that sort of thing. I haven't, I haven't listened to that episode. Give me the elevator pitch. What happened? Uh, well, I mean, it was, I don't know, it's fairly generalized. He just basically was a fifth host. On the yeah. show, he read a. And that's the thing about Mintcast is if you if you come on Mintcast, the easiest way to handle a guest host or well, I mean that is the easiest way is to bring them on, because when you, <laughs> we all know that w what happens when you upset the the uh, natural order of the show, um, one if not two people completely lose their shit and. Man, this is why I should come back for yeah. at least one, just so yeah. I can upset the balance. Oh, I'd Except be right the there pH. with you. I, <laughs> I, I enjoy it a little bit because it, you know, it is what it is. But yeah. we we've had episode like like what you're describing with elementary. We <laughs> we did an interview with Danny a while back. Gosh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was watching yeah. that in the back room of that. Which the, cool. Yeah, the way we did that episode was that we filmed the interview with her first, and then we went on yeah. to, you know. Which, which we did the same with IG as well. 
Um, That's right. We did. Yeah. Because uh, so y'all did it asynchronously. Well, yeah, but because the fact that he, um, you know, he's in a completely. It was a whole different day to him. You know, so it was for him. It was five o'clock in the morning. You know, (sighs) Um, and so and so. uh, but uh, what we did with Popey was we just made him another host, and you know he read a news article, and did some wanderings as well. Yeah, and it then, was evening for him. That, that's yeah. how Tony Hughes used to to deal with it, and yeah, uh, it was always getting closer. To that was time. a healthy, darn near three and a half hours. Yeah, we were on microphone. Absolutely. Yeah, and and then with... and then and then the innards was basically you know the interview with him, and you know we yeah. come up with a bunch of questions, and I, I I did kind of take over a little bit on the interview bit. You did I... fantastic, Majid. I got to tell you, yeah. Oh gosh, I can't wait for everybody to hear it. It's gonna it's gonna release on Wednesday. Um, it's on archive.org right now. If you want to go and listen to it, if not, no, it's don't on... do that. You got to wait for the release so that <laughs> there is no way to. Uh... To schedule archive.org releases, so whenever you, whenever you post something to archive.org, it's just instantly available. So no, you I just mean, don't tell anybody about archive.org. We that. don't. We we generally don't. Except just now. Yeah, <laughs> but apparently yeah. there are people that have scripts set up that archi- that oh. just download um, immediately when something gets posted. Which you know, if you're that nerdy, then you deserve to. Yeah, I was gonna say right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, on, a, I, on a slightly off-topic note, has anybody else noticed the Minkcast uh, stream um, doesn't? Oh, not the Intercast stream. Sorry, the podcast yeah. doesn't doesn't seem to play well with um, a lot of podcast players. I, Antenna Pod and Pocket Casts for some reason. Like if I'm on Wi-Fi, it's great. The minute I hit mobile data, oh, cannot da- uh, cannot stream. Try downloading, and then it won't be able to download. I don't know if it's an OG thing or an MP3 thing. And I don't use OG. Yeah, I, yeah. At first, I thought it was just me, and then, but it's every every podcast player I've used. So whether it's Pocket Casts, uh, Podkicker, Podcast Republic, Antenna Pod. Um, I now I use AntennaPod and I've I've never had a problem, but yeah. it's interesting you bring that up because I use a hundred and twenty eight bit constant for that for that show and I wonder if that might be too much. It's too much. Do ninety six. Yeah, ninety six should be the peak. You can't tell the yeah. difference. I just I do though. I I I mean I. I can tell the difference between 128 and 192. Okay, I've just but got that's a real... different, though. But only in voice? Uh... Yeah, I suppose. No, it, the it, frequency you, range you get that so little thin. bit of that little bit of underwater gurgling sound. I think the the that's compression just you went overboard on the uh, yeah yeah you went overboard on the on the post. Hmm. I want to know from somebody else. I mean, we haven't had any other complaints, but. It's interesting you bring that up. Now I use AntennaPod too, and I've never had a problem. Mm. But mine always just download automatically. I've never tried to stream oh, okay. it. So I generally stream. I okay. Don't download. Uh, so maybe 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 that's the mistake I'm making. Well, I well think, yeah, because archive is um, archive is weird. They don't give you unlimited bandwidth like the other places might. Uh, so it's it's different. You have to be respectful of archive. Okay. <laughs> okay. What's happening well, uh, at your end, Leo? Actually, we haven't actually. Uh, it's been a while since I've been on the show and had a chat with you. How's life oh, in your your end? Uh, fantastic, man. I'm on. Any... I'm on this. Uh, I'm on this immutable thing. Oh, okay. Where, Which one? Uh, specifically, the Aurora development experience one. Okay. Uh, because it comes with all the bits, like it's Fedora, and but the one thing I hate about Fedora is about. Uh, having to add RPM fusion and then having to tap mm, on like yeah. X and stuff, yeah. just does it all for you. So um, okay, but yeah, uh, like I was saying before, I had I had this conversation with George Castro the other day, and this I mean that's pretty much what we talked about. And the funny thing about it is that kind of a revelation of what what do you call it? Because that's that's been my thing, right? Like the word immutable nobody knows what that means the word uh i think george mentioned on uh late night linux one of those that um he prefers composable and i can see that right um bill you might be more familiar with it because of docker compose right uh that's that's how sort of how these systems are built um and i would then, say declarative would be a better well right uh, i'm talking to saying... somebody 
like I thought they were it, saying atomic. Okay, for, no, that's what Fedora is saying. Fedora yeah, has okay. gone back to the atomic words, which is what they were originally called before they called them mm -hmm. immutables and rolled into the silver blue thing. It was called gotcha. atomic. I think part of the problem is that we've had five different names for them. Yeah. But also, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I think the easiest way that, you know, slightly technical people that care in any way uh, might get on with the idea of an image based system where it's just an image right like you know you've if you've ever flashed an sd card with an image mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. kind of how these work so it might might sync up a little bit but the idea is that it's not for technical people it's not for those types of technical people if you care about the linux underneath then you're not the target for mm. this they're um george so said, who is the target who is the target george said that there are four people four percent of people that are running linux out of the out there on the internet it's not for them it's for the other 96. Yeah. For for those that know what a Bazite is because they had to click on the website to get it onto their Steam Deck, but at that point, no longer care what it is. Mm -hmm. No longer care about the underneath. No longer care about the drivers. They don't care about anything else. They're enjoying the Steam experience, and that's what they care about. If you yeah. start to care about the Linux, then you're going to get too deep, and you're gonna, you're, you've, you've moved out of that target audience. It's for people that want their computer to run. That's it's, it. It's a Bluefin. I, I like Bluefin, and um, that's sort of a more generic version. Or, or you can also no. Bluefin add on. is the the brother to Aurora. So Aurora is the KDE right. one. Bluefin's the GNOME one. Right, and and so I, I appreciate it for what it is. But you're right. So when I I find that when I run it for long enough, if I were to just put it like on my tablet, for example, yeah, it runs perfectly fine. The updates are fantastic. Everything is stable. And if you're just happy running flat packs, um, you know, app images, just basic stuff like that, then you're good. If it's when like you're saying that you need to start digging into adding VPNs or like stuff that needs more sort of that isn't going to work in DistroBox, I guess is basically well, the way because the, they have Box yeah. Buddy and mm -hmm. you know that stuff. So I mean they put a, a tremendous amount of thought in it, and I think what George has done has advanced the state of the art of it in terms of usability at least uh, much further than like Silver Blue. Um, but I still do find myself. You're right. I mean, after a certain point where I'm trying to do something that's just not quite the right use case for it, and that's where there's friction. But if you were to just use it, like he's saying, the the 96 percent, uh, I could imagine giving that to you know the proverbial there like relative, uh, and it just works. And, and like you could come, you could it'll run for years and it never be updated, and then you just pull down the next image and yes, that's it. Yeah, and he's added some really cool stuff. So, I mean, when you actually get into the command line, there's this idea of just. So, um, just is like this uh, meta command set where, you know, to update, it's RPMOS tree, blah, 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 blah. To get homebrew or to deal with brew, then, you know, you have to go through that. No, no, no. There's this thing called just where you can control all of those things. Just is the puppeteer of all of these other command line interfaces that that hang down below. And again, it's just one of those things where if you care about those commands, then just is not for you. But if you don't care about those commands and, and you just want to get things to go, just is fantastic. And so just upgrade. There you go. Just brew. Okay. Right. And it gets you where you want to go without having to think about your system too much. So and I think that's kind of where I've been where I'm at with uh, with kind of everything that I'm doing now. So if I've got friends, because this this is the thing I run into. You have friends? Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> They're, yeah. They call me on the phone and everything. Um, oh, my Lord. If I've got friends that, and this is what I run into, they have a computer that's old. They're talking about buying a new one, and that's when I kick out. You know, my nerd goes off, and uh, I say, well, have you heard about Linux? You know, and then I put Linux on their machine, and most of Yeah, that was already know. the wrong opening to the conversation. I, I know, broken I know, I know. But they're, they're, happy to, they're happy to have a computer that works like the day they bought it again because most most normal people now you know i'm when i talk about normal i'm talking about the lower tier normal the people that just need to get on and read their email and maybe watch a little netflix or something and this that's is perfect for that it and so is this a good thing because when i'm thinking yeah. about things i want to put on a computer 
for one of those people, a friend. I need something that's going to work with as little intervention as yep. absolutely possible. Yep, thousand percent. From me. Because I'm telling you the just upgrade thing. Like this is something that you could tell them to do over the phone. Just upgrade and then hit yes. And then it'll reboot for them. And then when they come back in, it will either work or it won't. And if it doesn't, oh, it fantastic. rolls back. All for you. The, there are very little decision making that you have to do in a system like this. And this is really where I'm at. I'm spending my time in Caden Live. I'm spending my time in Audacity or I'm playing a video game. Right. I don't want to think about that under, underneath of the system anymore. I do that for work. So that can stay there. I will focus on doing fun stuff on my system. But right. yes, give it to your grandma. That's the idea. And it'll just work. And that's because it, it, it does feel a lot more like the way the phones work, you know, where you've got mm -hmm. a very distinct um, software layer and uh, you're muted. Majid and uh, yeah, I think that's the exact point. I think that's the exact point. Yeah, yeah. And then you got, you got this entire separate layer for all of the he, applications. He sold me. This is the future of Linux, guys. This is where it's going to go eventually. It's I mean, and why it. not? That's as what long Ubuntu as everything is pushing forward. Works. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what Snap is. Snap is the other way to do this. That's yeah. why I was saying before, Snap is much more than just applications. It's the whole system in an immutable fashion like this, just different. So in theory. this is where everything yeah. is going. In theory, yeah. The ex execution might be an issue, but the theory is that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good. I can't wait until I can use SnapCore on everything. It's going to be cool. A cool. Core, whatever mm, that is. Which yeah. one? <laughs> All of them. Yeah. Well, we better get out of here. I think Majid has to, has to cut out. Yeah, Majid early. is making us stop recording right now. Blame him. <laughs> yeah okay fine <laughs> i feel sorry, like it, sorry guys i have a life i do apologize i'm quite sure if we would have kept going he wouldn't have noticed and we would have yeah. ended up ending at the exact same time well i got waffles to eat anyway so hey <laughs> god waffles Ooh, i have you to watch hungry now. Yeah, I, I, watch need, I just need fried chicken now i've been eating fried chicken for days i'm getting a little tired of it if you can believe that <laughs> so is your oh, anyways <laughs> Let us know what you think, everybody. Show at Linux, linuxotc.org. Comment on the socials or uh, directly on the website. That's a thing. We have a website, linuxotc.org. You can comment directly on the post. Yeah, it's even got bios. It know? does. Like vaguely up-to-date ones. Yeah, you um, have one. I'm not sure I'll if I didn't have one there right. yet. Now that you mention it, I'm not sure if I got Eric's or not. I'll have to check and see. I but, think uh, I think I think he's. I think mine was the last one because I was just. Oh, okay. Amazing. Well, good. <laughs> go over there and check. It Lots out. of websites to manage. So, anyway, we'll be back in two weeks. Some of us will, if not all. Until then, I've been Bill. I've been Eric. I've been Majid. And he's oh, is it me? Is he? I'm still. I'm still Leo. <laughs> and he's Leo. Yeah. See you later, folks.